Good morning, everyone. My name is Annie Fink, and I'm the marketing coordinator for Wonderware California. Thank you for attending our Learn in 30 webinar today, focused on engineering your HMI in minutes rather than days with the Viva OMI's auto assembly. After the webinar this morning, we will be doing a short Q&A. Please type any questions or comments into the Q&A box, the chat box, or you can email us at webinar at california.wonderware.com. Now I'd like to introduce your presenters for today's webinar. Luke Ignadozian and Mike Brost. Luke is an account manager here at Wonderver California, and Mike is a principal technical sales consultant who has been with Aviva for 24 years. Good morning, Luke and Mike. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Annie. Um, again, my name is Luke, and good morning to everybody. Uh, before Mike dives into auto assembly, I'm going to do a brief introduction on the Aviva 2020 release. There's a lot of new exciting things with the 2020 release, and I'll only be able to touch on a few few items in this introduction. So let's dive in with Unified Operations Center. Unified Operations Center is our system of systems approach. We provide a single platform where mm -hmm. you can view operational, engineering, and maintenance information. This has drastically improved cross-department collaboration and reduced the time it takes for users to, users to make decisions. Um, decisions that used to take hours are now taking minutes, and sometimes even seconds. Our responsive layout editor. This is all about uh, designing the application once and being able to view it on any device. Uh, you can configure the application to be viewed on different form factors. So when you're looking at your home desktop, your laptop, tablet or mobile phone, you can easily and clearly see the application. Another enhancement is our in-touch web capabilities. Previously, Wonderware has had web capabilities with in-touch access anywhere. The major enhancement here is that you no longer need remote desktop services. The InTouch web server can run on both Microsoft Windows Server or Workstation OS. There's zero client installation and no IT administration required. Wonderware is not only, or Aviva, excuse me, not only enhancing their software technically, but commercially as well. As you can see here, we have InTouch Unlimited, and it comes in two flavors the standard tier and the pro tier, uh, displayed in the second and third block of this pyramid. With the standard tier, you get unlimited web client connections, unlimited native mobile connections, unlimited RDP connections, development, the maximum tag count, which is 60,000 tags right now, but it will increase in the future, communication drivers, and full redundancy. When you escalate to the professional tier, you'll get everything in the standard tier, plus historical data analysis and reporting software. Another very exciting component of our 2020 release is now you will have industrial graphics, formerly known as orchestra graphics, across our entire portfolio for monitor and control. Now with customers that uh, are using multiple technologies of ours, they can easily standardize on a single common graphic library. One more thing before I pass it over to Mike Bros is I just wanted to uh, update everybody that we are offering free e-learning and curriculum. So if you were to go to Aviva's website and select our monitor and control portfolio, you could select this button. It's loading. And it'll take you to our Aviva website and you want to select complimentary on the left hand side here. And now you can see all of our complimentary and free training that we offer. One more thing, if you want to attend future webinars, please navigate to our website, california.wonderware.com. Hover over get educated, go down to webinars. You can see all of our upcoming webinars. Uh, we have another webinar this Friday on performance and OE data in the cloud. With that, I will pass it over to Mike Brose to talk about auto assembly. 
Right, thanks, Lou. All right, so today we're going to talk about how to take a application and automatically engineer the HMI to navigate through all the graphics tasks and symbols and, and base plates and et cetera that you wish to uh, visualize in your HMI environment. So the challenge we have here is that we've got a just we need to build a distributed water pumps station and a unified operation workstation. So each pump station can have anywhere between one and four pumps. There's a face plate for each pump. So we'll have multiple graphics that we need to manage. Some pumps will have some pump stations will have one face plate, some will have four, some will have two, et cetera. Um, there's a storage tank there at the pump station. There's a power meter on uh, the power feed going into that pump station. We're going to have multiple states, multiple cities, multiple pump stations in each city, and dynamic mapping and historical trending. So we want a map to follow our navigation, and we want historical trending to also refocus based on what we're currently looking at. Now, we have a pump station template inside of our uh, system platform environment. The template has been designed to be, uh, be polymorphic in the fact that it has what we call an object wizard on it. And the wizards can say, can change the template's data model based on our needs. So we have the option here of putting on a uh, single pump or up to four pumps on the station. Those options will change the way the graphics appear, will change the data that we're collecting from the site, will change what we're historizing to our historian, will change all the aspects about this pump station to uh, reflect our, our specific configuration. Now, as we take our object model for the SCADA project, it grows very rapidly when we start to stamp things out. So we actually have a total of 87 pump stations. 28 one pump stations. Each of those stations has an overview display, a face plate for the pump, a trend app, a power monitoring detail display. We have 29 two pump stations, uh, 18 three pump stations, and 12 four pump stations. For a total of 449 displays to navigate, organize, and display. So in a traditional HMI, we would be writing lots of scripts or lots of navigational logic on when to show something, when to see something. And we'd have to maintain that every time we added something to our application. So the OMI environment lets us take advantage of our models to, to create them. So here in the OMI application that we've, we've created, the application itself is determining based on our model, and we have a, a model of our plant. Over here, we have our corporation and we have the various states that we've configured. And in each state, we have cities, and in each city, we have a series of pump stations. And with this tree navigation, we can navigate directly to a pump. We can see its historical trending we can see its configuration. In this case, it's a single pump station. We could also go to ones that have multiple pumps. And when we have multiple pumps, there's actually multiple face plates. And so the system's smart enough to realize that this is where we want to see our face plates on our screen. However, there's four of them to display. So it automatically layers them for us so that we can switch between the four pump stations and command and control all four pumps from this one location. Now, there's no scripting required to make this happen. It just automatically adjusts to the number of pump stations we've configured. Our pump power meter gets placed in this region of this display down here. Our pump is shown on the, on the map. We have a little breadcrumb navigation up top here that follows where we're going, and it synchronizes itself with all the other components in the system. If we go to a individual component and zoom out our, our, our map, we could actually use the map to navigate to that particular component as well. So 
that's the result of what we what we've put together. Let's look at some of the pieces that required to, to make this make this work. So first thing we have is our pump station object. In the pump station object, it basically has all the data that we would ever need from any one of the given pump stations. But we've got a little wizard on it which says, let's change whether it's going to be a one pump, a two pump, or a three pump station. And we'll, re we'll adjust what this uh, data model looks like, how many tags we have effectively, and how many, how the graphics behave, and how many faceplates we want to have on uh, the station. Our power monitoring application uh, object template is a similar thing. We, you know, we have a power monitor, and we need to know how many phases we're going to have, whether it's 50, 60 hertz, whether we're going to historize that data, whether we're going to put trend pens on it, um, what voltage we're going to set for the phase, what circuit breaker we're going to put on that on that circuit. And these configurations will drive all the other choices and settings that we have on the template. So as we construct this out, we want an easy way to be able to bulk create all the components that we have. And, and there's a very simple CSV file format that we can use. So the first thing we're doing is we're going to create our, our take our state template and create our, our states just a little list of states, create our cities, create our list of cities. And then for our pump stations, we're just going to say the pump station we want. And we have to really give this minimal information because the template is defining all the details that we have in our, uh, in our pump station. We can simply, as we bulk create this, we just tell it, what do we want to call this pump station? What area do we want to put it in? And what security group do we want to make it a member of? And that's, in effect, the extent of all the information that we really need to do to create these pump station objects. And this is just a simple list. We load that into our galaxy, and then we'll end up with our, our model view. Of all our cities, states, stations in each city, uh, power meters assigned to each pump station. The power meter is embedded underneath the pump station and it's given the, the hierarchical name, pump station name dot power, so we can reference it and know what it is on every single pump station. So once we built out that big SCADA model, we would still be faced with the task of, of taking all the graphics that they have, even though the object templates did a really good job of creating unique graphics for every instance of our, of our, of our template that we have, we still have to find a way to navigate through them, this, when do we display them, organize this whole thing into a cohesive HMI. But instead, we can simply go into our HMI construction. And open up a, a blank HMI template. So this one has never been used. It's brand new. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tell it, load up the model. So we're going to take our model. Assign it to our to our HMI. This now, as you can see over here, it takes that entire model and builds all the navigation that we created in our model view, all our pump stations, everything that's involved. Uh, and we've taken that whole effort of the model view that we built inside the galaxy, and now this is driving a, a whole organizational view of our templates and instances. Up here, we're going to autofill content. And basically, what we're going to do is when we come to a place in the model, we're going to tell the system to look in its current place and find all the graphics that are on that instance. And then, if we have any remaining 
uh, locations in our HMI that don't have content, it's going to look up the tree and then down the tree and fill all the places that are missing. So the next thing we do is we create a select a layout. And we're going to take our pump station layout. So that layout now defines how we're going to organize our screen. And if we look at our layout, a layout is basically a, a, a collection of divided sections on our display that we call panes. So in this case, we have our center pane. And we've told our center pane to display our overview graphics. So every graphic we build, we give a categorization to. And then when we, so if we, if, if an object that we navigate to has an overview graphic, it will put it in this section. We've also told this pane over here to contain a component we call a content presenter. So what that content presenter does is it says, search the, the tree that we're looking at. So when we focus on an asset in the tree, look beneath that asset and find components that match a certain criteria. So we can have components that are categorized as a certain type of display. In this case, we're looking for something called an app device info. We can also put wildcard searches on that so we can only find certain subclasses of that categorization. We can tell it to search one level down beneath us or up to three levels down beneath us or all the levels down beneath us. We can describe to this how we want to, how it's supposed to populate itself. In this case, we're telling it to follow our navigation as we move around and dynamically find the things that are relevant to the place we are in our HMI uh, play. There's lots of configuration here. The important thing is there's no scripting, right? We don't have to go in and write all these scripts to say, hey, show this graphic, do this display, bind it to these tags, run these indirect values. Just, it will automatically construct this thing based on uh, using this, this layout. In this case, we have a layout down here, and we're going to have that display our detailed display, which is actually what's going to come from our power meter. And our faceplate here, pane, is going to display the faceplates. Now, the pumps could have more than one faceplate. And so there's an option here to say, how do you want to handle it when there's more than one thing to put in this pane? So we can either say single, which basically say take the first one and the first one wins. Or we could have multiple, as we're selected now, which means it'll just stack them on top of each other and give us navigational buttons to move between them. Also, it works with swipe left and swipe right if you're on a touch display. You can tell it to tab them and automatically build tabbed tabs across the top. So in the past, we would do this a lot inside of a single graphic, right? We would layer the graphics inside of each other, and then we would stack them all up and we'd have all kinds of scripting inside the graphic to say, if I click on this part of the graphic, then replace the thing and bring this to the forward or send that to the back or make it invisible or hide it or all these types of techniques. Here, we can just say, hey, tab it and I'll have a tab display pre-built for me showing all the content that I need to see. We put our historical trend app here in the bottom and we've simply told this guy very simply to follow the current content. In other words, just check this little checkbox right here, and now the trend will follow whatever we're looking at. So the trend will figure out what the asset that we're focused on is sending to our historian, automatically retrieve those tags, and put them on the trend. No scripting to load the trend or put data into the trend, we can just auto-construct this entire thing. Lastly, we have a little slide-in pane that's off screen here that we're going to host the nav tree in. So we've just said this is a little slide in pane, and <clears throat> we're going to put our navigational tree in here. 
because we've already told the app what part of the model we're going to be looking at and how we want to drive the navigational tree, this tree literally requires no configuration. It's already just going to follow whatever the, uh, the app framework is going to do. And then there's, a, there's another little app up here, which is called a breadcrumb, which will just give us a little breadcrumb navigational control across the top. And again, it's doing the same thing. Now, all these things, the map, the trees, content presenter, are all yoking together automatically in a, we call it a namespace that lives inside the OMI environment which allows content to share information between each other without needing to know what type of content that is. It just simply adds its information to the namespace, reads what the namespace is telling it to do, sets the namespace if it wants to take control of it, and automatically now we can drive all this navigation. Whereas before, we would have to put something on each button that we'd have here and tell it, Hey, go to the trend and load these load these tags. Go to the map control and position the map to this location. Go to this and do that. I mean, all the maintenance that we have in here is completely gone. So, going back to my view app here, I've set my screen profile. That basically tells it what size of screen I have and how many screens I have. In this case, I just have one, but I could have up to 50. This application will support up to 50 monitors in a single application. I've set my navigation. I didn't have to build that. That was inherited from the model view of my galaxy that I created already when I built my object model. I've set my layout, which defines how I wanna organize my, my screen. And now all I need to do is go into runtime. And this will then take all that context that we have, look at every asset, find out all the graphics it has to present, look at the navigational tree. And so the content presenter will begin to display our navigation. We can see here that if we focus on the top level area, our corporate area, we see that there's four summary graphics that are associated with each state. Those summary graphics are totalizing all our pump stations in each city and all the pump stations in each city. So that's the total for the state. We can easily get an overview of, of what our volumes are in each state. We focus on Arizona. Now it brings in the, the graphics for each city inside of Arizona. We focus on Phoenix. It'll show us the Phoenix site. And then it'll allow us to navigate between the pump stations in that site. So within this, Phoenix City, there's six pump stations, or five, sorry. And each pump station is configured slightly differently. The little boxes up here was telling us how many pumps are on each pump station. So the first one has three. The fourth one only has one. Second one has two. If we look at our trend. Our trend has been updated with, with the, the information of all those tags. If we were to focus on the power meter for that, our trend will be updated with all the signaling going from our power meter to the historian. Again, there is no scripting required to make any of this happen. I simply am telling the system follow me as I navigate around, and it built the navigation for me from my model view. And I have a fully functioning HMI in seconds versus days or weeks. If 
I come over here and go, pick a different state and pick a pump station here, it has four pumps. I have a faceplate that I can command and control each pump individually. If I want to stop a pump, I can stop a pump. Pump's going to ramp down. It's a big water pump, so it can't shut off immediately or you get a big water hammer, so it slows down. And when it stops, it shuts off. So you can see that I'm actually commanding that specific pump on this specific station, and I wrote no scripting to do that. Zero effort once I built the object model, and once I put it into my organized area model of my galaxy, my HMI just falls out and naturally is able to navigate everything that's there. Now, I can, you can always build in explicit navigation, but even that is kind of done for us because we look here at our Carson area. These content presenter brings in a graphic from each pump station in this area and provides a navigation point right here. Whereas if I don't want to use the trees or the or, or the, the tree view or the breadcrumb view, I don't have to. The content presenter automatically provides a dynamic environment to construct my navigation. I think we're in Q&A. Perfect, Mike. So we did get a few questions come in. Our first one, um, it's a two-part question. So the first part uh, is, does OMI have the same, same or any new capabilities in regards to regression analysis capabilities? Regression analysis capabilities, as far as there's app, we have, we have, app, uh, if you're talking about, um, we have apps that work inside of OMI, just like the trend app was working inside of OMI. We have apps that do much more advanced analytic and analytical analysis. Um, those aren't currently included in the little demo here, but yeah, there's, so OMI is a framework which contains content. That content can come from us, Aviva, or that content can come from anybody else. So we can host inside this framework and have that content follow us along, just like the things are here. For instance, the mapping app is coming from someplace else. That's it's a tile server on the internet. Trend app is ours. We could have a Maximo app that could bring in our Maximo data. We could have a machine learning app which could bring in uh, machine analytics. We could link into our cloud services which could provide online uh, data analysis up there as well. So yeah, so basically anything you want to put in here, this framework is designed to integrate all the disparate systems that your operator would have to interact. Perfect. And then we do have another question as well. Um, is the new Wonderware capable of using VBA? Um, and is it is it still using the proprietary Wonderware scripting? It's still using the uh, quickscript.net, which is a CLR-based scripting language. Yes. Okay, perfect. And then our last question um, regarding the access as an integrator. I had an, a user account, but it seems that that account is no longer available. It seems now I have have to create a new account under Aviva. Is this correct? That's something I don't know the answer to. I would ask. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, um, so um, this person had an, um, a system integrator account under Wonderware. Do they have to create a new one under Aviva? So if you're an existing system integrator for Wonderware, um, you'll be an existing system integrator for Aviva's monitoring control portfolio. So Aviva has five portfolios. There's the monitor and control, asset performance, um, engineer procure construct plan, and, and schedule, operate and optimize. And we'll have integrators for each portfolio. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Mike and Luke, and thank you to everyone who attended. If anyone would like to review any portion of this webinar, a recording will be available on YouTube and our website, california.wonderwork.com, in the near future, and you'll be receiving a copy of it once it becomes available. Thank you again for attending, and have a great day.